Hello there. Welcome to my presentation of A Good Story is One in a Million, Solution Density and Narrative Generation Problems. I'm Corey Seiler, and I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Kentucky, where my co-author and advisor, Dr. Stephen Ware, runs the Narrative Intelligence Lab. This paper examines some of the trade-offs between different desiderata for using AI to control virtual story characters. For instance, if we want to produce an overall story structure that meets the author's constraints, but we also want each individual character to act believably. Especially in a real-time interactive system, we can't afford to sacrifice too much computational efficiency to get these things. One family of approaches is called strong autonomy, where we have self-directed characters with no central coordination. Instead of enforcing story structure explicitly, we have to design the initial world to result in a compelling emergent narrative. Another family is strong story, where we have a central agent telling the characters what to do. This makes it easier to guide the story in a particular direction, but it can be a challenge to give the illusion of agency for the individual characters. Strong autonomy and strong story form a spectrum, and a lot of narrative AI work falls somewhere in between. For instance, a drama manager can guide semi-autonomous agents, a narrative planner can choose character behaviors with some compromises to create the appearance of more autonomy, or a system can generate either many possible stories offline and choose the best, or in the case of Felt, create a large database of events from a single story world and choose a subset of those events. In this paper, we are interested in ways to quantify the trade-offs between autonomy and centrality. For instance, if we allow for full or partial autonomy, how often will we get a story that also meets the authorial constraints? For application designers, this information can be useful to help select a story generation method that meets their needs. In order to compare such a diverse range of systems in a systematic way, our experiments don't implement such systems directly. Instead, we characterize the possible outputs of a range of systems from strong story to strong autonomy. And then we enumerate and compare the spaces of output stories or solution sets. We use a formalism similar to classical planning. The world state is described by propositional variables. Discrete actions can be taken to alter the world state if their preconditions are met. And we will use story broadly to refer to any legal sequence of actions. We also have author goals. Like the goals in classical planning, these are used to define what should be true in the story's end state. And characters can have their own goals. These are used to help define which actions make sense for the characters. To illustrate our solution spaces, we'll have a running example. We have a hero who has a coin and wants to acquire medicine for his grandma. There's a merchant selling medicine and the merchant wants to have the coin. There's a bandit that would like to nab the coin and the medicine, and the author goal is for the hero to succeed at getting the medicine. So consider this story. The bandit steals the medicine from the merchant and gives it to the hero. This achieves the author goal. The hero has the medicine at the end. But the story doesn't entirely make sense because the bandit had no motivation to give away the medicine. This story falls under our first solution set, which we call structured stories. That's any story where the author goal is achieved, the same kind that could be generated by a classical planner. Visualizing the spaces of Venn diagram, it's a subset of legal action sequences with only partial overlap with the stories made of explainable character actions. Conversely, consider the story where the bandit kills the hero and loots the coin. This time, with the death of the hero, our author goal is rendered unreachable. But the bandit's actions make sense because the bandit's goal was to get the coin. This falls under the solution set we call stories with intentionality. Any stories where the character actions are all explainable. See the paper for a formal definition of what this means. As an output space, this exemplifies the kind of stories that might be produced if we let the characters act with full autonomy. And here's where that solution set falls in our Venn diagram. In another scenario, the hero buys the medicine from the merchant. This is an example of a story where the author goal is achieved, the hero has the medicine, and the character actions are explainable. The hero wanted the medicine and the merchant wanted the money. 
This is a member of the intersection of the previous two solution sets, hence we call it structured stories with intentionality. This solution set matches what certain narrative planners could output. And as we said, it's an overlap between the previous solution sets as illustrated here. Now consider a story where the bandit steals the coin from the hero. The author goal is not achieved, but unlike our story where the bandit robbed the hero in a more lethal way, we end in a state where the author goal could be achieved later on if the story were to be extended. We call this property potentially structured, and it's inspired by a particular technique some drama managers use, where they don't guarantee a specific story trajectory, but they can intervene to prevent specific actions that will derail the story altogether, like killing a necessary character. So this solution set is sort of a relaxation of our previous one. Each of these solution sets was inspired by a particular style of system with varying levels of character autonomy, from multi-agent systems that impose no explicit author constraints to classical planners that only enforce author constraints. We've presented four definitions of a solution. In our experiments, we generate these solution sets for several domains, mostly taken from narrative planning benchmarks. Since we precisely defined each of the solution sets, we could enumerate them using an answer set program. Coincidentally, our colleagues have a paper at this conference that's fully dedicated to the techniques and applications of answer set narrative generation that I'm looking forward to. To quickly summarize the results, in most domains, as the maximum story length increased, stories that achieved the author goal were more common than stories with intentionality, but oftentimes, if a story had intentionality, then it happened to also achieve the author goal. There was, however, one domain where this trend was uh, reversed, and there were more stories with intentionality, and oftentimes, author goal achievement led to intentionality. You can see the full results in the paper, but here are just a couple of representative plots that show the relative sizes of the solution sets. On the left is a domain that's representative of the usual trend we saw, and on the right is the one that we noted as an exception. These trends make sense because oftentimes the domains were designed to replicate a specific baseline plot like the Indiana Jones movie. The design of the actions and character goals nudges the story direction towards the author's intent in these cases. Whereas in the domain with the opposite trend, it was taken from a simple adventure game, where story diversity was part of the design intent. In this paper, we explored the concept of solution density. That is, how much do we narrow down the story space by combining certain types of constraints? This is a useful tool for exploring trade-offs between story generation strategies. And as such, because our lab often works with narrative planning, our in experiments gave us some specific insights there. For instance, that many story domains have the property, if you find a sequence of explainable character actions, they will often lead to the author goal being met as well. In future work, we are exploring whether planner design can exploit this property, whether we can favor an author goal first or explanation first strategy based on the solution density. In the process, we're also trying these experiments with more domains and solution spaces that include belief models. That's all I have today. Thank you for listening.